Welcome to a Word in the Street special featuring an interview with Professor Vincent Cunanan, President of TUS. Hello, Vincent, and thank you so much for joining us today. It means a lot to get you on for the first special episode of Word on the Street. Um, the first question that I'd like to ask you is, what was it like to get the news that you were going to be the president of TUS? Uh, Brian, delighted to be here. Uh, uh, well, that's uh, quite a, it was quite an emotional response. Like, you know, I, I pride myself on being very professional, but uh, when you hear the word that you're going to be the inaugural president of the third technological university in Ireland that you have uh, tried to bring into being, and uh, then you're told that you're going to be the inaugural president, was, uh, I would say, more emotional than uh, my normal professional self. So there was a bit of hooping and hollering and, uh, and then relief. I think the, the greatest, uh, you know, what, what sort of swept over me was absolute relief because you you're, 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 you're just uh, had uh, two days of interviews and the following morning you're being told after those three and a half hours of interviews that, yes, this aspiration, this goal, this ideal, has go, is going to be realised, and you are going to be the inaugural president. So there's there's both disbelief and relief, as opposed to euphoria. But I, I did allow a sort of a, a small bit of a shouting to say yes, we did it, I did it, and uh, so it was it, it was great. But uh, reality then quickly sits in. But relief was probably the biggest emotion I experienced. And I think one of the things um, a lot of students might not know is the becoming the president of TUS. Could you touch a little bit on kind of the responsibilities that you then have to take on as president? Yeah, I mean, the, the responsibilities are, are onerous. Uh, and in the Irish system and under the TU Act and, and that, uh, I am uh, technically called not just the president, but the accounting officer. So basically, I'm responsible for everything. And if something goes wrong, I'm responsible. Whether that's health and safety, or a financial issue, or some other aspect of the running of this uh, institution that uh, doesn't go well, and I have to account for that. So I have to present myself to the Public Accounts Committee or the Arachnus Committee on Education, and they'll be saying they don't say Vincent; they say it's the president because that is the role that is the accounting officer. So you sit at the top, and um, I don't have that thing on my desk there that says the book stop here. But the book definitely stops here. Now, I, I'm surrounded by hugely capable people and a senior management team that allows for the various uh, fa uh, faculties uh, and uh, the, um, the organization of, the, of the, the whole institution to be run effectively, operationally. So I rely on a, on a core team of people uh, at VP level and Dean's level and then senior managers below that as well. They help me to run this organization, uh, and I hold them responsible. But ultimately, I am the, the accounting officer that has to report uh, the activities. So there's that responsibility, uh, but, the, but that's, that's sort of a, something you just take on board. I'm, I'm well used to this. This is, my f this is the, fourth, um, the fourth time I've been the accounting officer for different organizations. So that, that sits easily on my shoulders. What, do, what, what is more, which keeps me awake at night is, is our direction of travel. Are we on the right path? Uh, are we going to develop that big T and that big U? Are we going to be, are we prepared to be different? So you've got to be prepared to know what your strengths are, build upon those. Don't be looking over your shoulder all the time and say, well, are they doing better? Than and be prepared to, to say, this is what we do. This is what we value. This is where we're going. And if other people like that, great. If they don't, well, that's their problem. But so long as we are clear that we're on the right path. And so at the moment, um, we will be initiating a new strategic planning process. And that will chart the direction of travel for this organization, this nascent organization in a sense, over the next four or five years. And this will be the most important strategic plan in whatever length of time TUS exists for, because it's the first one, and it's the one where we get to say the direction of travel. After that, there will be minor changes along the road, 
But this is the one where we're going to say, we're putting a stake in the ground. This is where we are. This is where we're going. And uh, so I have to ensure that everybody has their say on that. Now we get to a balanced view of what that direction of travel is. So it's been, a, we're going to go through a very significant consultative process and uh, not everybody's views will be able to take on board. But we will get to a point where we have, uh, we've reached a consensus that this is the way of travel. So those are some of the things that keep me awake at night. Uh, and, uh, but, but married to that is this huge opportunity to create something of huge significance uh, for the future, not just for the now and for the students of now, but for the students of the future. Um, and actually, you said about like striving to be different. And that actually kind of ties into a fun question that one of my fellow students wanted me to ask you. Yeah. I, I thought it would be a good one to ask you. Hypothetical situation. Right. Let's say you're not the president of TUS and you have the opportunity to come back to college today and study. Is there anything you'd ever be interested in studying? Oh, wow. Uh, look, uh, yeah, I, when, when, when I have to fill out forms now, you know, they say uh, profession, like, and I have to be down president of a, uh, you know, president of a university, you know. But, you know, in essence, I, 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 uh, I didn't set out, you know, at a career path, you know, at 18 and, you know, doing the leaving cert, I think, you know, one day I'd love to be a president of a university. Like, you know, that wasn't, I'm an accidental, I uh, find myself in this role uh, by pure accident. Uh, no, no sort of long-term career planning. Uh, I'm a scientist. Uh, I'm a chemist. I'm a physical chemist. That's that's the defining aspect of my life, you know. That's uh, I went into to, to college to become a, a scientist, to become a to become a, a chemist, uh, and uh, and and life made me a physical chemist. Life made me uh, you know a researcher in that space. But that's that's what I am, you know. I'm you know. So if you if uh, you know if there was a lot more to say, well, what would you do? Well, I'm I'm basically I'm a scientist. And then I'm a, a, a chemist and then I'm a physical chemist. So if I was going back, you know, uh, with no knowledge, I'd still, I'd still be on the science side of things. If I was now, if, it was, if I didn't have that knowledge, um, you know, it's the interface between things that really excites me now. Like, you know, so it's that interface between biology and science and engineering. Because uh, I think that's, it's, it's, the, it's the interface. So we tend to think in the verticals and still, you know, even we as technology universities and others and professional bodies, you know, you're, you're an engineer or you're a scientist or you're business or you're humanities or you're in the arts. Uh, we've got to, that, those verticals are breaking down. The really exciting stuff is at the interface between these. So I, I see them now as, rather than verticals, as vibrating. So these are vibrating. When you vibrate, you touch off other things. And it's the little bits that touch off each other where, where everything sort of comes together. Those are the bits of real interest for the future. So uh, I'd like to be, uh, if it was go back again into something that's really interdisciplinary, really uh, that I get a bit of, a bit of uh, uh, science and a bit of engineering and a bit of uh, arts and a bit of everything. Design, you know, and I think these are really key features. That's where I'd, I, would, I would see myself working at the interface between all these things in order to try and solve some of the bigger problems, which are not verticals, they're really horizontal, but we're not actually, I'd say, producing the, 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 the horizontal people in order to address those issues. So that's where I would find myself. And I think the last question that I would like to ask you is, do you have any word or message to your student, maybe words of wisdom, now venturing into new territory, having a lot more students coming in? What would you say to them now heading into TUS? Yeah, folks, um, look, education is the greatest gift that you can give to, to anybody. Uh, education, uh, to me, is something that I'm absolutely passionate about uh, and the power of education to change lives. Everybody who's here is changing their lives and will change their lives for the better. Uh, we make... Uh, we give we make people uh, professionals, you know. So, you know whether you stay with me, as I say, you know when I meet the first years, whether you stay with me for two years, you know, I'll, I'll if you stay with me for two years, I'll give you a piece of paper that will change your life forever, change your life forever. Just two years, a level six, but it's about eighteen months. Stay with me another year, I'll give you another piece of paper, and you'll get a level seven. Stay another year, I'll give you another piece. These 
but the basic component of that is is that a two year program here will give you will change your life forever, allow you to go anywhere in the world to be considered a professional, and allow you then to build on that. So the contract I ask of all students is, give me two years of life. Do not leave here without giving me two years of your life. Working hard and get something. Do not leave. And uh, the reasons that uh, people, the, the worst thing for me is when students drop out. It's, that's, because they're, they're, they're not going to benefit from that education. They may be taking a step backwards. And, uh, and we work very hard to try and keep people in. Because I say, it's not much to ask, you know, two academic terms is, uh, but, but transformative in this main. So what I would say to you is, look, stick, whatever, whatever you're going through, uh, we can help you across the broad range of medical, uh, clinical, um, mental health, financial, we will try to help you across that broad range. But try and stay with us. Uh, because if you don't stay with us, you're, you're giving it up on a huge opportunity. But uh, as well as that, uh, stay open. Stay open, like, you know, um, and, uh, you know, keep exploring, you know. Keep exploring new things. Don't, don't get drawn into the, the you know, I, look, you start talking about social media and, uh, and people only looking at things that they're interested in, like, you know. Why not work, look at stuff that's of no interest to you? You've got to, you've got to keep a broad base, uh, be inquisitive. Don't be definitive. Inquisitive. Keep learning. Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to think about things differently. Don't ex don't uh, don't take the orthodoxy of the time. Because it's you, the students, that are going to be the future. Like you are the future. You know, old fellas like myself get a chance to help you to shape you, but you are the future. And if you're closed or not inquisitive or only accept orthodoxy and, and, and then get into fake, fake news, don't even start me on that. But anyway, you know, that's the opportunity that a university like ourselves offers you. And uh, if you can take that and come out of that with both the professional skills, the soft skills, but an inquiring, inquisitive, challenging mind, then we'll have done our job. Not just for you as an individual, but for society as a whole. So don't give up on that. Vincent, I cannot thank you enough for the interview. On behalf of all the students of TUS, that was an absolute pleasure. And uh, I hope that sometime in the future, we may be get, able to get you back to do this for Word on the Street. It has been a pleasure. Thank Thanks very so much, much, Brian. I hope it's been good for you as, as it has been for me. Thanks very much. Thank you.